start recording. Okay. Shalom, everybody, and welcome back. Um, I had an amazing, amazing revelation last night. Uh, this doesn't happen every day. I, I had the, the merit of getting up for chatzot. I got to sleep maybe an hour, an hour and a half. That's it. And I got up at midnight. And I had an op I was learning. You see, this paragraph we're holding on. Likutei Moran, Lesson 24, Paragraph 7. I'm working over seven months breaking my head on it. Seven months trying to get into it. The language is very hard. It's very condensed, very terse. You, have, you don't understand exactly what Rabin was trying to say, what he's trying to get out. And I go with the commentaries and whatever is explained, okay, but still feeling inside, there's something missing even in the pshat of understanding it. Last night, after seven months, I don't know why, how, an undeserved gift, a, an opening <laughs> blast of, of getting into this. And we're going to now explain it based on this new perspective. And you're going to see the questions we had on last class will be answered, hopefully. But also, it, it broadens the perspective, okay? So just a reminder. In this lesson, after Rabbeinu presents a concept, he then shows you how it's hinted to in a Kabbalistic terminology, okay? And the terminology is that the bottom becomes a, a garment for the upper. In the Sfirot, the, okay? Every day this happens, we, I think we, spent, we said this last week also, the Avodah, until Mashiach comes, is every day has specific sparks to rectify on a national level and on a personal level that only you can fix. And only today, not tomorrow and not yesterday, only today. And the today's scenario is for those sparks connected to your nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, echida, are sent to you to fix. And they come in the format of the challenges of the day. That you didn't wake up on time, that this, you didn't concentrate on davening. Even if you're saying it's been, it's been happening for the, every day for the past 20 years, every day is different. Okay? Every day has its combination of challenges that make today a unique day. And the requirement of the specific format of sparks to elevate. Every day, every person, and on a national level, when we get hit nationally, like what happened like October 7th, so it's influencing all of Israel. So we're all influenced by that. That's one challenge, even though it's subconscious, but it bothers you and it's like a heavy burden and it limitates what you could have done if there wasn't October 7th. So on a national level, you have challenges, let's say. On a personal, if it's your financial straits, you have to pay the water bill, how am I going to pay this and this and that, and things you have to buy today, and oh, shoot, I forgot to buy this and that. All these things are connected to the sparks that you have to elevate, and your attitude in dealing with them is how you elevate them. And Rabbeinu says, basically in this lesson, Simcha. Simcha is the key how to elevate all the sparks. The, that's, the, that's the beginning point and the end point, okay? Fine. So, he, he shows us always again and again the, the connection between the Kabbalistic terminology and what he's explaining, which is on a personal level, to show you that what you're going through is re rooted in the highest, highest depths of creation, okay? It's like once... Someone was complaining to Rav Nosen that he was having a hard problem finding a shidduch. Okay? And it was difficult to find a shidduch for his son or whatever. So Rav Nosen consoled him and he said, you know, also Yaakov Avinu had a hard time, hard time finding a shidduch. He said, you're comparing me to Yaakov Avinu? And he said, what? You think you, your, your, your life is not full of deep meaning? Only Yaakov Avinu? You also, your details in your life is filled with deep meaning. There's, there's deep meaning behind it. He says, Rabbeinu, the end of the story of the burger and the popper, the, the, the Sipri Masio, the Benachman stories. I think it's story number uh, 10. I think it's story number 10. Number 9 is the, is the, is the Chacham and the Tam. Number 10, the burger and the popper. Number 11 is the exchange children. 12 is the master of prayer. And 13 is the seven beggars. Okay? So number 10, at the end of that story, Rabbeinu says that when Mashiach comes, he's going to tell each person the deep meaning behind every detail of his life. What was that? I was in Chicago, and I was at that baseball game, and that basketball game, and I went on a group, and there were these girls over there, and Niagara Falls. I'm just saying, great. all the things you went through, even the crazy things that, you know, what connection is he to describe? Mashiach, when he comes, he's going to show you the deep meaning behind every detail of life, okay? It's unbelievable. So, um, 
Rabbeinu in, in showing and in, in connecting the Kabbalistic meaning behind life is, sh- is showing that correlation, Bezat Hashem. Okay? With that said, we're going to go over the last line of paragraph 6 and read totally again paragraph 7, but with a new perspective. You're going to see things fitting in better and we'll get to answer questions. Okay. Before, before we do read the last line of paragraph 6, we have to explain the Kabbalistic concept of the, the, four, all, the four dimensions of t- each one having ten spheres. okay? We said, in this lesson, the lowest dimension is called the dimension, the world of Asiya, the world of action, which is this world as we know it physically. It has within it its makeup ten spherot. The world above it is called the world of formation, Yetzira. When we say world, it's a different, like, it's in the same world, but a different perspective. Like we said, if you remember in an atlas, you have a map of like Canada, you have the map of where there's green and there's, there's, there's rocks. So you have one type of map. Then you have another map where all the minerals are, or ores to found iron, copper, so that the coloring of the map changes, even though it's, it's the country Canada, but it's shifting. Then you have temperature where it's coldest and warmest. So they give you a different map. So too on a spiritual level, you have this earth, but it's dimensions in the earth. The physical earth we see is this fourth one, the lowest one called Asiya. Above it is called Yetzira, which also has ten spherot within it, which these ten spherot in each world, each dimension, are what, what controls the energy being transferred into that, that dimension, that world. Okay, the goal, and the, the, the one above it, Briya and Atsirut. The goal is to use from the beginning point of the highest world, Atsirut, to transfer energy all the way down to this world, Okay. And now for that to happen, also there has to be a re- reciprocal uh, direction where from below, it's called Mayim Nukvin, Mayim Dechorim. An arousal from below, an arousal from above. You want Hashem to send down bounty from above, He requires us to do something with our free will. That's the mitzvot and good dudes that we do, okay? That's the idea of mitzvah. The mitzvah that we do, the mitzvot, is to connect this beginning point of this world, which is Malchut, the lowest sphera of Asiya, if you connect all the way to the Keter of Atzirut, and from there to channel Bracha Dan Vezat Hashem, okay? So it's always up and down, up and down. And for the rectification of the world, like we said, there's holy sparks trapped from before creation, and that's our job here. So we're always looking to elevate the holy sparks trapped with our mitzvot, to reconnect them, and then bring them up, and then Hashem sends down bounty, okay? So now, in these four dimensions, you also have a breakdown on a national or bigger level, the ten spherot. Each dimension has ten spherot, okay? So Asiya has ten spherot, right? Chesed Chochmah Bina Dat, or Kete Chochmah Bina, Chesed Gvot Tiferet, Netzachot Yesod, Malchut, that's in the first Asiya. Okay, the second world has that. Each world has ten. Nonetheless, yeah. as a general grouping, we take these four dimensions and regroup the ten spherot in four categories also. Okay, so and these four categories are hinted to in the four letters of Hashem's name Yud Kevavke. So, in that, if that's the case, Yud will be corresponding to the top world of Atzilut, Hey, the second dimension of Bria, uh, Vav would be Yetzira, and the final Hey is Asiya, this fourth dimension that we have access to more or less. Okay, so the ten Sfirot are broken into Yud Kevavke as follows. Yud is called Chokhmah. The first He is Bina. Vav are six Sfirot, okay? And the last He is Malchut. You count that as only nine. Chokhmah, Bina, plus six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then Malchut, so there's nine. So number 10 is in the first Yud. There's what's called the Kotz, the Ot Yud, on the bottom of the letter Yud. When a, when a sofer writes a sefer Torah, when writing Yud Kivavke, on the first Yud, there's a little spitz coming down from the roof of the Yud. It's very tiny. It has to be tiny, but it has to be there. And that's considered the Keter. This sphera, which is really there, but it's not there. It's, a, it's like a quasi sphera because it's connected to the next, it's the gateway to the next dimension, so it's in and out. Huh? Top of the roof or the bottom? The bottom. <clears throat> you have the top of the roof has a, has a roof, has a spitz, and you also have a tug on top of the Yud. And then the, on the roof of the letter Yud, where be, besides going up, the sofa also has to go down. Do you have cleft here? I can show you. If you have some cleft, I can show you. Okay, you, you trust me. 
There's a little, little line going there. It's only in the Yud of Yud Kevavke. It's not another Yud, it's a regular Yud. It's only in the Yud of Yud Kevavke, okay? So there you have 10, the 10. Okay? So with that said, the last He corresponds to Malchut. Okay? And that's the, the dimension. This fourth world, Asiya, has a relationship to Malchut. Because of that, okay, the lowest sphera of the world above it, which is Yetzira, which is the Vav, Yud, Kevav, the third dimension. Okay? So the Malchut of Yetzira, because it's called Malchut, it has a type of relationship to the dimension be below it. It's Malchut, it's the lowest one, closest to the domain of Asiya, which is also called, another nickname for the world of Asiya is Malchut. So because it has an association with the name Malchut, the whole world of Asiya, so the, the last sphera of Yetzira, of the Vav, Yud Kevav, the third, the third dimension, Yetzira, it's called Malchut of Yetzira, because it's also Malchut, it has a relationship with the world of Asiya, and because of that, its location is down in the world of Asiya. Even though it's Malchut of the third dimension of Yetzira, so it should be there. You have Keter, Chochma, Bina, Chesed, Motiret, and so on. Malchut of the third dimension called Asiya, which corresponds to Yudkei Vav. Vav is the six Svirot of Chesed, Motiret, Netzachot, Yesod, okay? So even though it's associated with that third dimension, because it's called Malchut, and its attributes are Malchut, and it's next to the dimension of Asiya, which is called Malchut, so it goes down. And the Arizal explains, and the, the Kabbalah explains, the Zohar, that when we, we say that the Ketoret has 11 fragrances, and the Ketoret has the power to smash into the domain of evil, to extract its Malchut, the Malchut of Asiya is down, not in its proper place. It went down also. Okay? Asi, the Yatsira's Malchut went into the world of Asiya, and when we wake up in the morning, we start our day, if it's at Chatzot, everything, the initial stage of your Malchut is it's in the Klipot. When you go to sleep, okay, what happens is you, you, you go into the domain of Emuna. And it's, that's when the evil tries to, to, uh, to, try to uh, suck out any, any holy sparks associated with you. So that's why when we wake up in the morning, they, they depart, but the only place they stay is on the fingernails, on the fingers. That's why you do Negel Vasser, you wash your hands in the morning to remove that impurity. How did that, how did that impurity, come, impurity come? Because while you're sleeping, you were made impure. By going to sleep, you were made impure. And that means they had to have access to some holiness. And our job in the morning is after they took what they did, so we have to pull out Malchut, hopefully pull back out what they stole, plus to pull out sparks which are there from before the creation. From before. So we have, a bit, we have a lot of job, we have a lot of work every day. As a Jew, you have an obligate, you have a, a mission. Hashem made you in this world as a mission to extract what the Sitra took last night when you slept. Number two, to take also, to elevate Malchut back to its proper place. Number three, the sparks which anyways are in the domain. The reason why this happens, Hashem lets this happen, because Malchut now is in the vicinity of where these holy sparks are from from time beyond, from, from before the creation, and only you can fix them today, with your tefillin today, your mitzvot, your mikveh, your daven, your kretschma, all the mitzvot you do today, okay? And depending if you do them with enough simcha, you can succeed to pulling out totally, or partially. Again, you see, when simcha is really complete, it pulls out the malchut. If there's no simcha, so you're doing your mitzvot while still in the, in the earth. <laughs> your malchut... Your connection to Malchut is still in the early, you're doing mitzvah that like in Tisha B'Av format. So you're doing mitzvah, great, bravo, it's a mitzvah. But it's still stuck waiting for that time or that day or that moment where you really be b'simcha and you do one mitzvah b'simcha and retroactively will pull up all those days of mitzvah that were stuck in the earth. So, so basically there's always hope. There's always hope, B'Zat Hashem, okay? Fine. So there's 11 fragrances in the Ketoret. He says in this lesson, Rabbi Nachman, that the Ketoret is what pulls out the Malchut. It's like a chain. They're all connected. So now we're now pulling back the chain and they're, they're all linked together. The, there's 11. 11 is including the Malchut of Yetzira plus the 10 of Asiya. And in the 10, Malchut is in the earth, in the Klipot. So we need the extra boost of the Malchut of Yetzira together with the 10 because we need 10 that are not stuck. 
We have already malchut of Aseh which is stuck inside. So to make up for it, I need the malchut of the higher world to replace, in a sense, it's the root. It's, a, it's always connected. The malchuts are connected. The malchut, the lower malchut is like the daughter, and the upper malchut is like, if you want to see the mother, or even above, like the, the, it, the keter, basically. The keter and the malchut are always connected. Okay? So we, it, it's like a chain, like a, we're pulling it back up. So that's why Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman, quoting the Zohar, says, Ktoret has a, specifically 11 fragrances corresponding to these 11 svirot, and they have the power to smash in and to rebring back the malchut. So he says, he equates doing mitzvot v'simcha to ktoret. The ktoret does the job. When you say ktoret b'kavana, it has the power to bring you simcha, number one. And when that's done also, you can extract. And in general, when even not saying ktoret, any mitzvah you do, v'simcha extracts. Okay? So the wording, the idea is that the malchut of Yitzira anyways is down below. It should be located. It is its proper place is on the bottom of the section of Yetzira, but because it's called Malchut, it's down. With that said, that introduction, look at the last line in paragraph 6. In paragraph 6, what did he say? He said, bechinat Malchut ditzira, mimena bina da dasia. He didn't say, the translation is like this, this is the idea that Malchut of Yetzira, it, it, it becomes made from it, the Chochma Bin Adat of Asiyah, the lower world. He didn't say, like in the previous paragraphs, that Chochma Bin Adat is Malbish. It becomes a garment to the Malchut of Yitzhak. That's, that's, that's the format of language he used for when he said that Chesed Ruat Tiferet encloses Chochma Bin Adat, Netzachod Yesod becomes a garment to Chesed Ruat Tiferet, Malchut becomes a garment. Netzach. Here he didn't say that. Why? Because the bin Adad can't go up further. The maximum wall it has is the world of Asiya at its roof. It can't pass it to Yetzirah. It can't go up. So what Malchut has, does, it goes down to this world. It's available already. And there the Chochmah bin Adad goes on it. Okay? That's what Rabbeinu says in the last line of Malchut Yetzirah Na'aseh Mimina. It becomes made from it. Chochmah bin Adad of Asiya. Okay, the Chochmah bin Adad from the lower world, which is the top of the, top of the lower world, of Asiya, the world of, of Asiya, it becomes it, 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 it becomes enclosed, but it doesn't go up to do so. It's in the vicinity. So that means, based on this, Malchut Yitzira, which contains two components, it's Pnimiyut and Chitzoniyut, I know it's a bit of Kabbalah, and the external part and the interior part, they're both there. They're both available down below. Okay, now watch paragraph number seven. Will be Pnimiyut Birchaan, and from the Pnimi, it's the first time Rabbeinu mentions this term of Pnimi. In the Kabbalah, there's this term of Pnimi in Chitzoni. That every Sphira has an internal part which goes up, an external part which is connected to what's below it. That's why it's divided into two, okay? Because the Sphira is always moving, or up or down, okay? So because the movement, the whole Sphira doesn't go up, part of it does. The internal part goes up, and the external part becomes available to what's below it, okay? So here's the first time... Rabbeinu in paragraph 7 introduces Pnimi. He says, Ubi Pnimiyut Birchaan. And from the inner essence of the blessings. Wait a second. Until now, he said there's one blessing. There's what, there's what's, what's the one blessing? It's called Birkata Sechel, the blessing of the intellect. Just to recap, when a Jew does mitzvot besimcha, he causes momentum. The momentum activates bracha because your mitzvah, when done besimcha, gets the world to move forward. You want the world to become a better place? You want people to wake up? It doesn't help talking to them, okay? You want the creation not to do earthquakes and not to do bad things. Even the creation doing its mission to do bad, killing people or this, or all types of crazy things happening. We need the creation also to wake up and to do good. How can I get the whole creation, including mankind, to do good? Rabbeinu's advice, do mitzvot v'simcha, the greatest Weapon is simcha. We really have to give thanks to Chabad for their mitzvah tanks and them going out to encourage people to do mitzvah. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. When, when, when you see this perspe perspective of this lesson, it is a big thing to encourage people to put on tefillin and everything. Just Rabbeinu is adding one point, b'simcha. <laughs> it's a good thing. You know, don't force, okay, okay, I'll put on the tefillin and just leave me alone. No. Get the guy happy to feel good about it, to make it b'simcha, and then get him to put on the tefillin, all right? So the, the idea is mitzvot, you're yeah, amazing. 
And now the Simcha part of it, that's how you get the world to wake up. It's an amazing advice. It's amazing. He says, Rabbein, you want the world to become a better place? Work on your mitzvah performance. You're upset. Look at these people. They're Mechal on Shabbos. And they do this. Now how could they eat treif? And how could they do this? And how could they do Malach on Shabbos? You want people to get better? Okay, so start now with you. Instead of being uh, and constipated and, and always uh, uh, like negative, do your mitzvah b'simcha. That's, and it has, it has a rippled effect. All of a sudden, the world around you is shining. The guy's complaining. My wife, I come home, she's always negative and this and that. You want to help her? You, the reason why you're seeing your negativity is because there's a kol posel, bemuwa posel. You, you, you find a blemish in someone else. There's a blemish inside of you. What to do? Work on your simcha and doing your mitzvah. Be happy about you, who you are, and your mission in serving in this world. Appreciate the good. This has an effect on your, your environment. This is a known idea. Even these therapists and all these guys, they go into you know, yoga and the mind thing. All these terms, they also agree to this idea, but it's a Jewish idea. That if you have positive energy, it all of a sudden influences your surrounding. It's a known it's rooted in the Torah. It's obviously spiritual. It's not like a, oh, it's a scientific technique. No, chas It's something rooted in the neshama. It's true. Okay? On a Jewish perspective, of course. Okay? So, that's one of those track. Okay. So, I just want to go back to this point here. Pnimiyut bircha. We said, so, 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 there was one blessing, the bracha of the intellect. All of a sudden, Rabbeinu throws in, plural, and it's in Aramaic. Pnimiyut birchaan. And from the inner essence of the blessings. Why does he throw that in? Because emuna is also a blessing. It's one thing to have birkat ha-sechem. And he says, but you have to make sure that even though Hashem blesses you with the intellect, that's what that's the result. We didn't, I skipped on that. When you activate uh, the world to come back to Hashem, you allow for bracha to come and you are eligible to receive this bracha. But you have to be smart to choose the right bracha. And he says in the lesson, the right bracha is always the blessing to understand Hashem. Because when you have sechel, when you dat kanita machasarta, dat chasarta makanita. If you've acquired knowledge, you have everything. And if you lack knowledge, then what do you have? You have the nice Porsche and Lamborghini and the big garage and the big house and the club bed, everything. But you have no dat of Hashem. <laughs> so what, is, what does it help? It's no value at all. Zero, 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 zero. Ich. Okay? What's, what's, what is value is when you're filled with an awareness of Hashem in your life that is enhanced, the greatest bracha in the world. And he says, though, nonetheless, you have to put in that emuna. Okay? And he went out of his way, Rabbi Nachman, to start connecting emuna to the hands. If you notice, he said, Ish emunot, rav brachot, vayadav emuna. All these verses connecting the hands to emuna, the hands being bracha. And that Rabbi Nachman went out of his way to show that emuna has to fill the hands also. It shows you that emuna is also a bracha. Okay? So the two blessings are the blessing of the intellect and the blessing of emuna. Okay? From the, es- from the inner essence of the blessings, which interprets as, what does it mean the inner essence of the blessings? On the Kabbalistic term, it's the pnimi. Fine, that's still very not tangible. So he explains it. It's dakuta birchan. The refined parts of the blessings becomes blessed two points, which are another representation of the two we just mentioned. We mentioned sechem, birkata sechem, and the bracha of faith, the emuna. He says two new blessings that are more refined become blessed due to, due to these two things, and they're called nidbarech mehem hamesader lahamayashev etasecha. Okay, Rabbeinu says two points. Two things, and it's very difficult to grab them. He says, Mesader and Meyashe, which translates as the organizing, organization of and the settling of the mind. Okay? So Mesader means, when you Mesader something, when you organize something, how do you organize something? With your feet? With your mouth? With your hands? You know, you want to organize the stock and the storage. Okay, take this, put it here. You do Pe'ilut, you do mu action, activity, to make seder, when we say, okay, let's make seder here. Let's make seder, right? So even a person has many ideas and wants to present them, so he has to write them down. Okay, let's make an organized seder. Let's make a, an organized picture here. So you write a, a grid, mar, a grid, a mat. You make something. You type something out. You use your hands. The hands is the key. 
even as technology is getting advanced and all these things and all the movies they show like things on laser but still hands are being used they have like they have these science fiction movies now and you know soup where they're putting the hands in like it's like laser but they're using the hands still even though even though it's all laser and everything even in science fiction the hands are there said there in life requires the hands let's make said the house is upside down let's fix up let's make said there we say neighbor let's make said there and at home Let's make everything organized. How do you do that? You clean up with your hands. You wash the dishes with your hands. You do the laundry with your hands. Everything's with the hands. So seder, misader of the mind is really an indication of the hands. Okay? So the misader and meyash of the sechel. The hands involve the input of the hands to make organization of the sechel and the meyashev. What's meyashev? Meyashev means from the root lashev, it's sit. To sit and to become... What does that require in life? Emuna. Emuna. To be meyushav, in order to be calm, you know, <laughs> like tense, tense and anxiety, whatever, whatever they call that, the person's writing, you need a big dosage of emuna to be calm. Emuna, he's going to explain, is, is, is like a, a, a period of you just take it easy, just let go. You're not doing anything. Okay? It's funny, the video just froze. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, Meyashev is movement, and sorry, sorry, Mesader is movement, and Meyashev is non movement, which is Emuna. Because Emuna means we have to stop running and just believe. When, when you say you have to believe, that means you have to let go, stop. Because a person who's trying to do and do and do, there's no Emuna necessary there. Because he knows what to do, and he's running for him, running for it to do and do. When he reaches like a wall, and he's expected to accept it, so he can't do anything. So he has to shev, he has to sit and wait, and that requires emuna. Okay? Fine? So he's saying here, when you succeed in the brach of the sechel, the blessing yeah. of intellect, filling of the blessing of emuna, so now you go up a level. It becomes more refined, both the sechel and the emuna, and they earn Two new terms. The new term is called Mesader and Meyashev of the Sechel, which means the, or the hands, the hands of the Bracha, the, 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 the conduits for the Bracha of the Sechel to do Seder, to make organization, which is also a blessing. When things are in the right place, that's a blessing. And the Yishuv of knowing to be settled, which means Emunah coming in, also the Sechel. Shehi Bechinat Keter. Both of these together make up keter. Okay, so we're stressing. The keter is made up of two particles, two parts. The mesader, which is the hands, making organization of, this, of the sechel, and it, it includes within it also the emuna part of the sechel. Okay? So now he explains both of them. Watch. So first of all, he wants, first he says, bechinat Here's the proof that you need that, that, it, that there's a bracha in the keter. There's a bra the bracha of the sechel and the bracha of the muna are associated with the eke, with the keter because eke what Hashem told Yitzchak we said this many times already Hashem is telling Yitzchak you have eke eye is the holy name associated with keter eke is with you and I will bless it now yeah you have the bracha for the next stage for the refined part of 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 the brikat sechel the brikat muna up a level and that's called the keter. So now, first he explains, Keter, this is interesting, watch, okay? This is the Chibish I discovered last night, and I hope it fits in. Keter hu leshon hamtana. Keter means to wait, okay? There's two waitings. When you take out time to make seder, that's called waiting. There's also a waiting where, of a muna, you have to wait, you have to sit down, and you have to wait. But it seems, in this hamtana, Keter leshon hamtana, it's the waiting that's needed to make seder. Like we gave the analogy, if you remember, many times of the warehouse, and they're just bringing in trucks, bringing nonstop merchandise, and you don't have time to settle the merchandise. You tell the truck, okay, just put everything here and go because another truck is coming. I can't have you here We're spending the time just organizing the, the merchandise. We'll do the, we'll do the organizing. Just, lo just bring down the merchandise and go. So, another truck, so then all the trucks come. They, the, the whole warehouse is upside down. We tell... The clientele, we tell all, all our, 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 our suppliers, wait, we need to make seder in our, our factory. 
So there's a waiting to do seder. In other words, to make seder in life, to make organization, you need to take time out. You need to wait. You're always running, 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 running. It's like a person who's working like 12 hours a day and he didn't take care of his health, okay? So now his, his body's broken down and he can't do anymore. So he tells us his, his, all of his clients and all of his people, I need a vacation to work on myself. I need to fix up my health and organize things and fix up things, okay? So that's a seder. That's a hamtana for the seder. So watch what he says. Keter hu leshon hamtana. Keter is from the language of waiting, and he brings the proof of Rabbeinu from the book of Eov. Kamoshikatuv katar li zaer. Elihu told Eov, wait for me a little. And the word for waiting in the book of Eov is written as katar, which is not Hebrew, it's Aramaic. Wait for me a little. And he says, ki kishe sholin et adam eizu sechel. Because when a person is asked an item of intellect, what does he say? Hamten ad she'et yashev. Watch this. He says, wait until at yashev. We said, coming up, there's a big question in this letter, the lesson. In this lesson, sometimes Rabbeinu says first, misader, and then meyashev. And coming up, you see in the next paragraph, he switches it. There's meyashev and misader. And, and this, this Torah is Lashon Rabbeinu. Every word is measured here. So when he says it in one order, he's saying one thing, and when he switches the order, it's another thing, okay? In our context here, he said first misader, and then meyashev. Meaning what? Seder, the hands, the intellect, taking time to prepare and make things organized is a prerequisite for Meyashev. It's for the Meyashev. You hear that? When I organize, and if, when, when a person says, I need, ish, I need to be calm, but I can't be calm if my house is upside down, if the factory is upside down, if my body is upside down, I can't be calm, okay? I can't work properly, I can't connect to Hashem if I'm not, if I'm not organized. So the calmness, the yishuv, which is settled, which is emuna, is dependent first on me making a seder. So here Rabbeinu says, Hamten ad she'et yashev. Wait for me to make seder. Like he said, when someone asks you a question, the reason why you need time to answer is because all the pieces of information that you're receiving from the question and what's in your head already are not settled. So we tell him, wait a minute, let me make seder. Until I have the Yishuv. You got that? The, the answer will come when I have Yishuv. Yishuv means emuna. I will answer you, but a, a question of intellect, I will answer you through emuna. but first I'm going to build, this is very deep, these things, but this is how psychology of the, of the mind works. And I believe Rabbein is really going inside here how to explain how things work. Okay? So he says, first is Mesader, Hamten, Wait for me to make seder, that's of the hands. Let me organize my brain. Give me a moment. You know, like for example, someone asks you a question and you couldn't think of the answer at the time. And then afterwards, or, or you, someone, you, you'd have an answer. After two hours, it comes to your head. Why? Because in the meantime, you're able to structure, you had time to fix your brain. And say, said, the answer was this all along. I didn't even think about it. It's like I told you the joke. They say you know how to tell a Hungarian a joke on Shabbat. Why? Because he only gets it after Shabbos. So it's like preparing from Shabbos to Chol. You know how to tell a joke on Hungarian, okay? So he only gets the joke up. <laughs> okay? Sorry. Sorry to say that. Uh, Non-Jewish Hungarian. Whatever. Sorry. But you got the joke. You can't tell someone like that uh, airhead uh, a joke on Shabbat because he only gets it after Shabbat and it's you're preparing from Shabbat to Chol. That's the joke. I hope you got it, okay? So that, but what's, like, what's the truth in that joke? is that it happens a lot in life, that at the time, you could, the answer was so clear, but so why couldn't you give the answer? Because your head is mumbled. Why is it mumbled? Because you didn't take time to put seder. You're always in a rush, 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 rush. You need a break for the seder of, of the intellect. No, we're not talking about a break for emuna. We're talking about I need a break. There's no wall in front of me. I need a break to make a structure and organization in my mind. That's, that's, Hamten ad she'et yashev. So he's saying, when someone asks a person a question that requires intellect to answer, what is the answer? Hamten, let me then organize. Ad she'et yashev. What's the point? Until I come to the yishuv, the emuna, Because the emuna can only come, the yishuv, me'ashev, can only come into place if there's a mesader. Emunah, Rabbeinu says, alone is not good. 
Intellect alone is not good. You need a balance of intellect and emuna. He says those Jews who have a lot of strong faith but they're not educated in the Torah, they're very easy to dissuade these type of people. You can play games with them. You can make up all types of hooji buji and all types of, 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 of weird things to believe in and they'll fall into it because they have no sechel of the Torah. But the people also of just intellect and no emuna, they can get lost with the, if you give them a very intellectual challenge and convince them Otherwise, of the, the right path, you can also fool them. So what's needed, Rabbeinu says, is you need a balance of sechel and emuna. Just to go off for a second, this is why Rabbeinu stressed every Jew every day to learn halacha every day and to do it bodidut every day. Because in these two, you strengthen the sechel, that's the halacha. It strengthens to give you clarity what's right and what's wrong, that's halacha. And hit bodidut, where you're always connecting yourself to God, so Hashem is there for you, and He's there to give you guidance of the things you don't know about, that are beyond your, your grasp. But because you have the vessel of the Sechel in, ta- in place, you're learning Halacha, Hashem can shine through your emuna into the Halacha what to do. In other words, what's not, I need advice on areas of life that Halacha is not dealing with. The emuna will use the vessel of Halacha, hear this? Will use the vessel of Halacha to give you clarity. So even if you have an idea, but it might not be a kosher idea, it might be a wrong, wrong idea. You have these people sometimes have crazy convoluted things. The secret for them to have, to put them always on the right path, is that they have the balance of halacha and hitvodidut. This is what sex says, this is what strengthens the misader and the meyashev. You hear that? Misader is built on intellect, okay? Giving a person good, healthy, kosher intellect is halacha. On that, you cannot, then you have all the things happening in your life. The store, the renting, the marriage, living here, the clothing. All the things that are extensions. But they're built on intellect of halacha. That you're living your life as a Jew. And on that, okay? It's like the guy, he buys a house, but he has to make sure that there's a place for a sukkah, there's a kosher mikveh, okay? So he's doing gashmiut, but it's always connected with halacha and he's making sure that it's right. And then to for sure make sure that he's on the right path, he has to also be doing it about that's the issue. So the Meyashev is dependent on the Mesader. Okay, this is really crazy stuff. Mesader and Meyashev. So here he's saying, Hamten Achet Yashev. I want to answer you, but I don't want to give you a pure intellectual answer. I want the answer to be filled with Emuna. So I'm giving the right answer. So he says, Hamten Achet Yashev. Wait for me until I have, I'm settled. Okay. The gam sham, so that's number one, that's the misa there. And he said, and also there in the keter, sarich emuna. What's, what, why is he saying this additional point, Rabbeinu? Because he explained until now the misa there. Now we want to explain what is the meyashev. There also you need emuna, which is another term for meyashev. The issue to be stopped, you're sitting and waiting. And what are you doing while you're waiting? You can't go forward. There's no fixing up to do. Everything's in place. And still, you're told to wait. What do you do then? Emuna. That's what he says. Mibchinat Amon Mufla. Mufla is another term for Keter. Rabbeinu borrows this term to show you Amon, which means Emuna in this context, of the Pele, of the Keter, that it also requires Emuna to activate it. Okay? This is a refined blessing. When you learn to arrive the blessing of the Sechel, and you put Emuna into it, like we mentioned so many times, so now you activate a higher level of sechel and emuna. It's called the mesader me'ashev. And this is the ball game already of the keter. Okay? So this bracha that you activated, the bracha of the sechel, the bracha of the emuna, activate dakut bircha'an, the refined blessings, the blessing of the keter. He said himself, it's also a bracha. It's also a blessing. And the goal of the blessing is, yes, intellect, but it's on a higher refined level now. It's Misader Meyashev, okay? So now with all this said, now we can understand this Kabbalistic sentence. Vezeh Bechinat Shemi Pnimiyut Chesed We were stuck on this last week. Vezeh Bechinat Shemi Pnimiyut Chesed Divu Atiferet This is the idea of from the inner part of Chesed Divu Atiferet. What does that mean? Chesed Divu Atiferet Rabbi Nachman says corresponds to the hands because in the Kabbalistic terminology Chesed is like the right hand of Hashem. Gvura is the left hand. And, and Tiferet is the torso, which is the balance. Knowing when to balance. Not too much good, not too much right, too much chesed, and not too much severity. A balance. Okay, so chesed, gvura, tiferet, 
are referring to the hands because it's with them that giving and taking, you know, restraining, withdrawal, giving and not giving take place in the hands. When you give, we say to give. How do you give? You don't give with your foot. You don't give with your, your, your nose. Okay, I take it. You give with the hands. A normal person, even by Shem, the anthropomorphism of Hashem's giving is in the hands. Okay? We say to Hashem, Poteach et yadecha. We tell Hashem, Poteach et yadecha, Masbiya. We're telling Hashem, Hashem, you open your hands. Yadecha, U Masbiya lechokhai ratzon. So, hands is the idea of where we give. Okay? So, Chesed wrote the Pnimiyut of it, we said, is what, what, what he calls the blessing of the intellect. Bracha is in the hands, but now you want it to be the blessing of intellect, so that's called the pnimiyut, the in, inner essence of chesed rotiferet, becoming a garment external to chokhmah binadat. In other words, brikat asechel. Brikat, the blessing of intellect is when the inner essence of chesed rotiferet becomes one with, becomes uh, external to the chokhmah binadat, which is the intellect, the wisdom, okay? So that's one thing, Okay? So he's saying here, what we said until now, that Keter is made up of Mesader and Meyashev, so he says, this is what it says in the Kabbalah, that from the joining of the inner part of Chesed, with the external Chochmah Bin Adad, which creates the Bracha of the Sechem. That's number one. And number two, we pnimut Malchut Ditzira. Where is Malchut Ditzira, we said? Down below. Malchut Yitzirah, normally its place is in the third dimension of Yitzira. But we said because it's called Malchut, it belongs to, it's connected to the fourth dimension of Asiya, which is called, in Klali, in general, it's called also Malchut. So the Malchut of Yitzira is connected. That's how there's 11. There's 11 Svirot, if you want to say. The Malchut of Yitzira plus the 10 of Asiya. So it's down below. What's down below? Both the external part of Malchut, of Yitzira, and the internal part. The internal part of Malchut Yitzira, where is it supposed to go eventually? It's supposed to eventually become external to Netzach Hod Yesod of Yitzira. I know it's still pretty deep. I know, I know, but there's such practicality out of this. Unbelievable, okay? <sighs> Are you guys with me? Okay, fine. So he, Netza, the, the Malchut of Yitzira, both components, it's, it's Chitzoni, and Pnimi are down below in Asiya. And eventually the Pnimi of Malchut has to take off and go up becoming the external of Netzach Hod Yesod, the legs of the world of Yetzirah. Okay? But before doing that, it becomes enhanced from down below. Okay, Because I was asking with this edition, I want, I want you to see the quotation from Pri Chaim. It's a bit of Kabbalah, but you understand what's happening here. But, be, but before that, just understand, that the Malchut of Yetzira corresponds to Emuna, because Emuna is always on a level above you. Okay? Chesed Wortiferet, Chokhmah Bin Adad is within your level. It's attainable, graspable. It's something which is tangible. But now, Emuna is what is beyond your tangibility, beyond your grasp. All you can do is believe in it. Okay? It's like, for example, I don't need Emuna to believe that this table exists. I feel it. I need emuna for what I don't see, but I'm told is there and I have to believe in it. That's why I need emuna. What's beyond my grasp? Okay? Tzadikim who see angels. You have stories of Baba Sali that he spoke to Eliyahu Nabi. So for them, that's already not emuna. That's already sechel. Because they see the tzadikim, they see Eliyahu Nabi, they see the neshamot, they talk to them. No problem. They have a higher level of emuna. Things which are beyond their capacity. But for us... To really see a Yom Navi or to see an angel or, or to have a tzaddik come into our dream, whoa, that's already beyond our, our capacity, okay? That requires emuna to believe that these things happen, whatever, okay? So em, uh, emuna is on, on the, is referring to Malchut Yetzira. So he's saying here, just before we explain the, the quotation, we'll stop with that. Malchut of Yetzira, you see, from the pnimiyut of Malchut Yetzira, what is the inner essence of Malchut of Yetzira? Malchut Yetzira, it's external. And internal is emuna, but there's two parts of the emuna. There's the part of emuna which fills in the sechel, because he said, remember, when you're learning Torah, don't forget you have to put emuna into it. Which means your goal in learning Torah is to strengthen your emuna. Your goal in learning Torah is to know how much you don't know. Your your emuna is enhanced. You're entering a page of Gemara, and it's it's like touching. It's called Yama Talmud, the sea of the Talmud, because it doesn't end. It's a sea. 
Okay? So your attitude in learning Torah is, wow, I'm touching something which is endless, as opposed to the guy who's learning it as an intellectual accomplishment. Oh, I get up the Gemara. I got the Kasha, I got the Rosh, I got the Rishma, and I got everything. So he feels accomplished. Whereas the person who's learning of Amuna, he's advancing, but always feeling unaccomplished because of Amuna doesn't end. So I accomplished, but within an unaccomplishment. <laughs> I'm accomplished, I got somewhere, but it's always there's something beyond me. I'm happy, I appreciate every drop I get, but I know there's much more, okay? That is the lower part of Malchut of Yitzira. That's the emuna in learning. And then when he says the dakut, the refined level of emuna, which is the me'ashev, mesader and me'ashev, that's the pnimi of Malchut Yitzira. Before this pnimi becomes a cup to the, <laughs> the netzach od yesod of the world above it, it first becomes enhanced. How? The, he says that there's a zivug, the unification between the pnimi of chesed gimotiferet and the pnimi of machut yitzira, there's a joining together. And this is what causes the keter. That's what he's saying now. Everything we said, mesadem yashev, in other words, on Kabbalistic terminology, it's this idea that the pnimi of malchut yitzira joins, there's no mitlap uh, there's no now enclothing. There's a zivu, there's a union between the pnimi of chesed, which is the, which is the sechel, and the pnimi of the malchud yitzira. So there's the mesader and me'ashev. This is what makes the keter. That says, we pnimi ut malchud yitzira. Sorry, before that, we pnimi ut chesed, we pnimi ut malchud yitzira, nase keter dasya. This is what creates the keter. So Rabbeinu's whole thing on mesader and me'ashev is to explain this Kabbalistic thing. He will finish off just, I'm going to read the quotation from the Priyat Chaim. So here Rav Atiyah brings the quotation from the book, the Arizal's book, Rav Chaim Vital, really. Priyat Chaim, Shara Tfila, chapter 5. And Mishnat Chasidim also quoting it. Vizay Lashon. So he says like this, okay, this is a bit tricky, but listen closely. Ketzad, how does this work? Chitzonyut Shalosh Rishono Dasiya. The external part of the three first levels of Asiya, which are Chochma, Bina, and Da'at. So their external parts, okay? Malbishim, look, this is crazy. Malbishim lipnimiyut malchud yitzira. They become a garment for the pnimi of yitzira, malchud yitzira. You hear that? Unbelievable. The pnimi of malchud yitzira skips a level, skips the chitzoniyut of malchud, skips the pnimi of chokma binadat, and becomes inserted in the cup of chokma binadat, the chitzoniyut. Okay? Haumedet bin Koma, which is there anyways. It's standing there in the world of Asiya. Shehu, and this is the Ket of Asiya. Vechetzoniot Shela, and its external part of what? One second. Chetzoniot Shela, mitlabesh, I even got lost. It's so, so, the wording here is crazy. Chetzoniot Shela, of the Malchut Yetzira, of Yetzira. Vechetzoniot, the external part of Malchut Yetzira. Mitlabeshet, becomes enclosed in the pnimiyut of chesed gvurat You hear that? It's like jumping. It's like, it went like this. Instead of going, you know, the normal cup, uh, garment, uh, enclosing, uh, just a pattern, it went, the, the top part became filled with two levels down. Okay? And its bottom part became filled with also two levels down. Okay? So in other words, it's happening that something higher is going down extra lower, and also, the other one is going extra lower. Why all this? Because we want to activate the Keter, which will lead the gateway to the next dimension. So this has to happen that a higher level is going out of its way to go down lower. And by doing so, that's how it's lifted up. So that means, before the inner part of Malchut goes upwards, it's first enhanced with whatever part of Chochma uh, Bin Adat or Chesed Gvot Tver, what he's saying here in the, the Priyat Chaim. And only then it goes up to become a kli for Netzach od Yisod. And then on a practical level, what this means is that when a person has refined that, his sechel is refined and it's organized, and then that causes a refinement of this higher level of emuna. this is what allows a person to go up to the next level. All this happens when a person does the mitzvah the simcha. This is the gift. So basically Rabbeinu is saying, you want to have this inner balance of Mesader and Mayashev, 
it starts with being the Simcha and doing mitzvot. This is the byproduct. This is the end result. Okay, we'll stop here. That was heavy, and it probably caused a lot, a lot of chazara. But Bezat Hashem, we should be zochet to do the mitzvot to the Simcha Bezat Hashem. Wow. <clears throat> Do you ever see